Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to another Truth Talk. <laughs> I know it's been a while and I haven't posted any videos or anything, but we were in, um, my church was in a consecration and we had a revival. So during last week, we were in revival Tuesday to Friday. And um, God had just put it on my heart not to do no videos. And um, because I really wanted my next video to be about abuse and stuff like that. But that's not what God wanted me to do. So, I just was like, okay, well, Lord, I'll make another video. When, you know, when you tell me, you know, the, another video, the next video to do and what it's going to be about and all that. So, here we are. <laughs> here we are. Um, I still get a little nervous when I make these videos. But that is okay because all is well. Um, so today's video is actually going to be the Extraordinary Challenge by Nick Cannon. Um, this morning after I finished praying and everything, and I even had, uh, fell back to sleep because my kids, they actually went back to school today after being remote since they went on Christmas break. So when they came back from Christmas break, they had to go remote. And, um, they just recently... Today was the day they went back to school. So after getting them off to the bus and everything, and you know, I sat down and kind of did some business and stuff, and um, you know, wrote down my little stuff from my hair and my pickle orders and all of those things. I um, prayed and then uh, God gave me a scripture. Um, I'm gonna tell y'all what the scripture is towards the end. But God gave me a scripture and. Um, then I watched Nick Cannon's show today. You know, I subscribed to him on Facebook because I don't have cable, child. They doing too much on cable. I don't trust my kids with cable. <laughs> but um, I had watched his show, and today he was talking about um, him and his girl are having a new baby, which I was shocked to see that Bree was having a baby. <laughs> but him and his girl was having is having a baby, and he didn't know whether to mention it or to let it out because Zen had just passed. Rest in peace, um, baby Zen. But uh, his other baby had passed and he wasn't sure if he wanted to, you know, they was basically just trying to keep everything quiet and silent. But uh, he came up with the extraordinary challenge because of the things that he faced and how people give him so much backslash saying you're this and you're that. But he's trying to be this, just this real open I'm not going to say vulnerable because it's not always okay to be vulnerable. Sometimes it is, but not all the time, you know, because people try to play on that. But he want to be this real open person on TV, which I respect. Who wouldn't? Like, when you put yourself out there on TV, you want things to be real, which is why it took me so long to do this, um, to start my channel because I wanted things to be real. I wanted things to be authentic. I wanted to be real issues, real truth. You know what I'm saying? Based off what I believe, because I'm a strong believer in God. Yes, I'm saved, sanctified, and filled with the precious gift of the Holy Ghost. And um, I strongly believe that putting out fake media is ridiculous. It's stupid. You know, so who wouldn't want to be real when the, once they put themselves out there? Um, so he has sent out this uh, extraordinary challenge. And then what's crazy is that I had to... Uh, Google what extraordinary really was, you know, just so I can get a full understanding. I ain't even writing on my paper, but I um, Googled it, and from my understanding, extraordinary is just the different things that you face. Like, nothing is ordinary. Nothing is ordinary. Nothing. I don't believe anything is ordinary. Everything is unordinary <laughs> because people try to make certain things ordinary or uh, regular or normal, you know what I'm saying? Nothing is. Everybody go through their own battles. Everybody go through things that they face on a daily basis. People, uh, everybody goes through tribulation. Everybody goes through tribulation. So, um, this is my extraordinary story. Um, and of course, you know, the, the past two videos that I've made, uh, is, a uh, uh, my lighting is so off. But is you know, part of my extraordinary story. But just here recently, um, when I watched it, 
And I'm kind of like, dang, you know what I'm saying? I swear, I promise y'all, like, I respect Nick Cannon so much, like, just over the past, since the new year. And, you know what I'm saying, during the Christmas time and stuff, and I have been watching Wild Night, like, I love Wild Night, y'all so funny. But, um, you know, I have been watching, and then I've been, you know, watching Nick Cannon's show, and Nick, you know what I'm saying, he allows you to see the real person that he is. And I listen to some of his music, and it's like, dang, I didn't know Nick Cannon was putting music out like this. You know what I'm saying? Like, his music actually speaks words. His music has meaning. His music lets you, you know what I'm saying, in on how he feels. Like, for real, for real. Like, it ain't just booty, booty, shaking and rocking, rocking, rocking. It ain't all that. It ain't all that. And, uh, it's like people really downplay his music because it's not that club banger or, you know what I'm saying, that hype this. And he does spoken word. I really, I love, I love, love, love spoken word. I do believe that I have some spoken word down in me, but God hasn't led me in that path yet. So, we're just going to leave that alone. <laughs> but, um, he, it was like, dang, I didn't know Nick Cannon was, you know what I'm saying? I want to say so deep, but it's not deep. It's real. That's normal. Going through and having tribulation is the normal. You know what I'm saying? Like, if people try to make it seem like, oh, this real, oh, we got to have this and beautiful big house and this, and this is the norm. This is the American dream. Baby, normal is tribulation. Normal is struggle. And the thing that makes it different or extraordinary is the way you handle the struggle. Um, So... With all that said, I'm just gonna go ahead and get started. And um, so I literally have dealt with a lot, a lot, Lord, <laughs> a lot from mental, physical, emotional abuse, molestation, um, poverty. You know, we just just recently during our uh revival, God was really just letting us know that He was basically telling us to uh. Put on my, our hearts and minds of what we needed from him and what we wanted him to do in our lives because he was going to do an extraordinary blessing for us. <laughs> so, uh, miracle. Like, Pastor Gray say, uh, my pastor, shout out to my pastor, Pastor Keith Gray, and First Lady Stephanie Gray from uh, Miracle Deliverance Temple in Colquitt, Illinois. Shout out. Yes, I love my church home. Um... And uh, he was basically saying that one miracle, you know what I'm saying? God is going to do some extraordinary things for us. The stuff that was going to take us a long time to get there, he was going to do it quick, fast, and in a hurry if you did what you were supposed to do. If you put that necessary praise on it, if you put your heart into it, and if you were faithful, if you believe and you have faith, and also if you're willing to take those necessary steps. You know what I'm saying? Praise, faith, belief, um, just being faithful to him, like following his word, doing what he tell you to do, being obedient, um, because God had been dealing with me on um being obedient. And just when God tell you to do something, do it. Something as simple as uh just this weekend I had went to Saturday I had went to um my sister Maya's uh one of my church sisters, Maya's uh graduation party. And the Lord told me to take my Bible. And I'm saying her like I'm getting dressed, you know, put my stuff on. And the Lord was like, I'm like, okay, make sure I got everything I got. And I turn around, look at my purse, and the Lord was like, grab your Bible. And I'm like, for what? And I'm like, Lord, huh? He was like, just grab your Bible. So I was obedient, and I grabbed my Bible. So when we got there, my son's guy mama had actually uh, picked us up. She do parties. She do the balloon arches and all that. Um, excuse me. Um, shout out to Sharonda Bradford. Sister Sharonda. Sharonda Bradford, I love you so much. She is like everything. I am so blessed to have her as my son's godmother. She is everything. She's so sweet. She's so kind-hearted. She's everything. So I had uh, initially wrote down um, some stuff that I wanted to do for as a fish fry. Because, you know, as you guys know, if you watch my channel, you see that I have, uh, I make flavored pickles. And I also uh, braid hair. But uh, my flavored pickles are the thing that I, I believe is going to make me the more money the fastest. You know, I think it's, this is going to, I ain't going to say make me the most money the fastest, but it's going to be a breadwinner. Child, just believe me when I say it's going to be a breadwinner. If you ever tasted WPJ's pickles, you know what I'm saying. You got to taste it to know. Um, Why oh, I can't find it. 
Okay, well, I had wrote down uh, a bunch of things that I needed for the fish fry. And she had told me that she had put some sweet hot garlic pickles into her chicken salad and how good it was. So, I had came up with the idea to um, do a fish fry and um, do like a fish fry with like a macaroni and cheese or a spaghetti. And then like with the potato salad and or the chicken salad, have like little samples of them made with the flavored pickles in them, whether it's sweet mayo, whether it's sweet hot garlic, whether it's whichever flavor, you know, we decide to put in and just have little samples so that people know that you can do more with these pickles than just um, eat them like a snack. Because let me, eat them like a snack. So it's like, uh, I'm gonna have to show you. I'm probably gonna have to, I'm, I'm probably insert a clip or a picture or something of what the pickles look like. But they're just little snack pickles that I slice up, you know, throw some ingredients on them. And baby, when I say smacking, how the kids be saying bussing, bussing. <laughs> but they are so good, I kid you not. People be like, oh my God, literally. And I be like, really? Is they really that good? And people will tell you, like, they are really that good. And I'm just the type of person that if you have any um, reviews on my pickles or if you feel like they didn't taste right or whatever, like, I honor that. I really do. Like, just be honest. You know, Lord gonna tell me if you're honest or not. Like, if you're just trying to get free pickles, God gonna tell me. But <laughs> the people who I've been selling them to, you know, church members and all that, like, they actually let me know how the pickles taste if they too soft. And uh, one of my sisters uh, just actually told me that she had got some pickles for me and they were salty. And I was like, huh? I was like, nah, I don't use no type of salt or nothing like that. So I'm like, okay. Well, maybe, you know what I'm saying, because I did have to use a different ingredient than I usually use. So that may be it. But I even tasted them, and I didn't taste the salt in them. So I had told her to, um, once I had gave her some pickles for somebody, I told her to let me know how they taste. Because if those taste salty, then I know it's something, you know, that I did. Because I, I, I'm always accept I always accept um reviews i accept criticism very well if you feel like or if you think taste something wrong in my pickles like i'm not the type of person to get mad catch no attitude none of that let me know tell me if they too soft if they don't taste right if they not hot enough like let me know so that i can know what to do to fix it um so yeah beginning of february i will be doing a, a fish fry just a Throw them out there, do a whole, uh, I want to say it's going to be like a launch party because I'm going to officially have all my labels, my business cards, everything. I'm so excited about this. Y'all just do not know. But I will officially have my business cards, you know, backdrop, tablecloth, all of that so I can go to the mini pop-up shops and everything. So, yeah, I had, uh, when I got to the party and I had sat down and I was like, what the? And they had done it, and I just laugh every single time. It makes you laugh when you listen to God and actually do what He say, and then you realize why He told you to do that. It's all I don't know why, but it's always funny to me because I be like, Lord, you just knew. Oh my God! But I started laughing, and I was like, That's why God told me to take my Bible because the paper that I had wrote everything down on, like everything I was gonna need, napkins, silverware. Uh, spaghetti, you know, what type of fish we got to use, everything. My whole list of the whole shebang. It was in my Bible. And God told me to take my Bible for that specific reason because I wanted to make sure. I kept forgetting to show her because I was going to ask her help with it. She is very good. So, so Sharonda Bradford, look her up on Facebook. Sharonda Bradford, look her up on Facebook. I'm going to try to insert her um, social media. But she does parties. She is, I mean, when I say decorations, balloon arches, the whole nine. And she is such a sweet soul. Do not run over my mom, my baby guy mama. <laughs> Don't try to make her do too much because she's so kind hearted and so sweet that she just, she just, I believe she overwhelms herself trying to help others. But I know she can use the business. I know she can use the income. So shout out to her. Check her out. Um, and uh, So we sat down and I was sitting next to her and I was like, well, that's why the Lord told me to uh, bring my Bible so that I can show you this paper. <laughs> so I showed it to her and, you know, we got to talking about the labels and the backdrop and all that, child. I'm finna get ready to spend an arm and a leg on this backdrop and all this stuff. I already put a down payment on it. And she was telling me, you don't have to spend that much. Like, baby, you're spending a lot of money. $660 for this stuff, baby. And I don't got it like that. Let me tell y'all. We, when I say paycheck to paycheck, I mean, her style to her style, pickle sale to pickle sale, <laughs> literally, 
literally, literally, lyrically, like somebody I know say lyrically, <laughs> but literally from her style to her style to pickle jar, from pickle sale to pickle sale, like we are not rich. No, I don't have a savings account. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm literally trying to build, get it out the mud. I'm trying to get it out the mud. So, you know, you got to start from somewhere. So that's where we at. And so, uh, you know, she be, you know, she's helpful. So I, I'm always uh, willing to get advice. I'm willing to learn. I'm willing to grow. So I go to people who I know can help me in certain areas. Like a lot of sisters from my church, a lot of the, the, uh, I want to say the mothers, we really ain't many mothers in the church no more, but most of the older women in the church, they're, they're the mothers, but most of the mothers in the church, you know, people who have wisdom, people who have been there, who have went through things, you know, and I go to them for advice when I need it or when, you know what I'm saying, or even a lot of times God will have me pray and he be to give me that, gave me the answer before I can even go to anybody, but this, I went to her and it's like, okay, I know I'm going to need some help with this because, you know, it's just me and my kids and I'll be really overwhelming myself, especially when I have to do her or when I have pickle orders. I try to, you know, put that oomph behind me to really get it out there. But God has really been showing me how to be patient, how to wait on him, how to trust him, not worry about what nobody else think or what nobody else say. Like if I can't get the pickle orders out, God going to make it okay. You know what I'm saying? He gonna, if them people get mad at me because I can't get the pickle order out, then hey. I, I can't do nothing about that. But a lot of people have been, you know, I've been getting them out. But this week, um, I, okay, so back to the challenge, the actual challenge. Uh, but, yeah, God told me to take my Bible because, you know, so I've been working on being obedient and everything. And um, so uh, I literally just now, you know, been dealing with being obedient and living for Christ. And not sinning, okay? Not sinning. Like, no sin. <laughs> no smoking. No fornicating. No cussing. No, none of that. No, none of that. It is possible, y'all. Please trust and believe me. With God, everything. And with God, anything. With God, anything is possible. And I say that confidently. Confidently. And the only way that I can say that is confident as I am. Is because my extraordinary story, I've been there. I've been that girl who went to church and got saved and tried to get her life on track and continued to do wrong and continued to fornicate. I got four kids, and only one of them was during the marriage. All the rest of my kids was out of wedlock. <laughs> and you're not supposed to have sex to you married. You're not supposed to have sex to you married. That's why we have so much drama so much beef so much this so much that baby if we hold ourselves if we as women and men because i believe men can be celibate you can wait on the woman you don't have to have all that experience because at the end of the day the woman that god has for you or the man that god has for you is for you it's for you so don't worry about needing to have all this experience and needing to have this and need to have that that's just what people say you know just to try to get in your draws but I um I yeah just my journey of uh going through you know dealing with all the things that I've dealt with you know what I'm saying having to come back and you know how okay so when you grow in life you go through certain things that make you like I'm 31 years old so everything before I turned 30, before I became 31 that I went through it molded me it made me. You know, and I thank God for my foundation because my grandmother instilled church and God in me. My mother made us go to church three days a week. When I say something, I say something like, why we always have to go to church? And I was a tomboy, so I didn't like wearing dresses. I didn't like wearing skirts. I didn't like doing none of that. But I didn't understand back then, back then, I didn't understand why mama always made us go to church. But now I know. You know what I'm saying? My foundation was God is I ain't gonna say was but it is still to this day you know what I'm saying and even going through um your dis situations and everything you don't realize what your foundation is you know what I'm saying you don't you know what I'm saying and if you don't have a foundation build one and the best way to build a sturdy foundation is with God allow God to be your foundation allow him to be your rock 
Just like Pastor Grace said before, and uh, I had watched the video where Sister Jocelyn Grace, check her out on YouTube, uh, Jocelyn Grace had said this. Uh, my foundation and our foundation is, the foundation for a skyscraper is different than the foundation for a house. When you have a foundation, when you create a foundation with God and you get a steady foundation with God, your foundation is built for a skyscraper, even though it's just a little hood on it. That foundation underneath is for a skyscraper. Now, my little hood, my little hood or house, whatever y'all want to say, but I don't want to say house because it can be something even smaller than a house. People that's homeless believe in God. People that's homeless trust God to guide them every single day. Trust God to get them food and shelter every single day. So it can be something as a cardboard box. But your foundation underneath that cardboard box is made and structured for a skyscraper, even though if you're here. That foundation with God, that godly foundation is there. It's a skyscraper foundation, even though if you got a hood on it. That's what I'm trying to say. Even if you got a little cardboard box on top of that foundation, that foundation is there. So you have room to grow as high as you want to go. And just recently, I'm literally learning that. I'm learning that if you trust God, if you believe in God, if you allow God to lead your daily activity, I mean every single thing in your life. God knows our stories from end to beginning. He knew the end before he knew the beginning. He knew where you was going to end up before he knew how you was even going to get there. And it's like if you allow God to guide you, lead you, pray, read the Bible, trust him, have faith in him, listen to him. Y'all know that little voice in your, in your mind? You know how you got the, the devil over here? <laughs> and then, it's so funny because when you make it visual like that, it do become funny. But you know you have the devil on one side and then God on the other side. It's just like that when you're talking in your brain. Okay, the devil's going to tell you to go rob these folks and go take their money and go do bad stuff. And he's going to tell you to steal. He's going to tell you to do everything that you know in your heart that you're not supposed to do. Everything that's wrong. Like if you're just the type of person out there that just believe robbing people, stealing, killing, and all that is right and it's okay to do, you need some deliverance. Okay, you need a little more Jesus. A, little more, a lot of more Jesus, especially if you feel like murder in this right. But then you also have that godly voice. Just wait. Just be patient. And depending on how you feed your flesh, it's either, it's either you're going to feed your flesh or you're going to feed your spirit. Now, when you feed your flesh, you sitting around binge watching TV all day, you eating all day, you smoking, you drinking, you just living your life not really sudden God. That's feeding your flesh. So when you go through things, your flesh going to take over. You know what I'm saying? Your flesh going to make you snap out on that dude. Your flesh going to make you want to bop that girl. You know what I'm saying? Your flesh is what makes you want to do those negative things. But if you feed your spirit by praying, fasting, reading, studying the word, staying consecrated, going to church, go to church. God is there. Just like he in your house, he is there. And being around like-minded people is everything. It's a total different feeling than what it is when you're in the house by yourself. Like, even when you go to church and you start praising the Lord, like, Friday. Friday, we put the stamp on it, baby. Tuesday, we put the down payment on it. Nah, the down payment I'm talking about is that praise, that down payment praise for God to do everything that he want to do. This extraordinary blessing, extraordinary uh. What is it? It's not, it's, it wasn't the extraordinary blessing. Miracle. The extraordinary one miracle. Pastor Grace said one miracle. But I believe mine is more than one. I got more than one miracle coming. Uh, but it is, you know, that one miracle that just throws you over the top. You know what I'm saying? But that one extraordinary miracle or that extraordinary blessing that we want God to do in our lives. And um, I, me personally, when I went up and, uh, you know, during this consecration and during the uh revival i really wanted god to touch my finances and to make me whole total deliverance total deliverance because my um i dealt with a lot i dealt with lust i dealt with promiscuity i dealt with you know what i'm saying fornicating i dealt with smoking and cussing and just really not being my true self the me that god sees me to be you know what I'm saying? I wasn't her. You know what I'm saying? I was everything but. 
know what I'm saying? So I really went to God this week, last week, because I was like, Lord, I want to be whole. I want to be able to, glory to God, thank you, Jesus. I want to be able to do your will. I want to walk in your light. I want people to see your light shining through me. You know, I want, I don't want to go up there and get saved and give my life to you and then turn around and go back outside and smoke weed. You know, those are being, those type of things are by being bound, especially if you like a sin. If you like smoking weed and you like getting high, don't expect God to deliver you from it because that's what you like to do. Until you get sick and tired of being sick and tired, you're going to keep doing those things. And baby, when I say after sitting up in here smoking a quarter weed a day, a quarter ounce of weed a day, dead, stressed, depressed, anxiety, can't move, can't clean, can't, I got four kids, getting up and feeding my kids was uh, just so much to me, because I didn't have the strength to do nothing else, like, I would force myself to do certain things, like, make sure my kitchen, my living room, and my bathroom was straightened. I was straightening up my room. But everything else, it was just like clothes would pile up. I wouldn't want to do laundry. I just I just was doing the bare minimum. And I hated it. I had got so down and so depressed to the point where it was just like, God, what is my purpose? Why am I here? Why? Why? You know what I'm saying? Like, please let me know. And in doing that and in praying before I had even came back to church, I had been in and out of church from childhood, you know what I'm saying? Since my mom and them, you know, straight away from the church or whatever, I've been in and out on my own. So it's like this time that I came back, I wanted it and I knew deep down in my heart and in my soul, I wanted it to be right. I wanted to be able to go through the save lifestyle and this journey the right way. You know what I'm saying? You don't have to stray away. You don't have to smoke weed when you're feeling stressed. You don't have to um, drink. I wasn't a drinker, but people drink. People do drugs. People pop pills. You know, when they feel in some type of way. And I had to learn that when you feel in some type of way, baby, get on your knees. Pray to the Father. Pray to the Christ. God. Him. The creator of all of this. All of this. He created everything. <laughs> he created everything. So why not get on your knees and go to him? Why not cry out to him? Why not ask him for help? And then... Don't expect it to just be like, oh, God, can you give me a Mercedes? And boom, a Mercedes pop in your driveway. Nah, baby, it ain't like that. You got to suffer some things. You got to go through that tribulation. You got to go through them trials. You're going to have to go. You're going to have to suffer a little bit. You know, God trying to build character in you to make sure that you're right and you're where he needs you to be in order to receive that extraordinary miracle or that extraordinary blessing. So I actually thank God for Nick Cannon um, sending out this extraordinary challenge because I didn't know what my next video was going to be, but I knew that I was allowing, allowing God to guide and lead me. You know, over this short period of time, God has literally changed me. He has totally changed me. When I first, when I first started praying, I wasn't saved. I was still smoking that quarter ounce of weed a day, but I, was, I had reached out. I had started praying. I'm like, if nothing else in my life, I know God. I know he's real. I know him to be true. I know he's a way maker. I know he's a provider. I know he's a healer. And my mind needed to be healed. My mind, because the devil tried to take my mind. He tried to make me believe that I wasn't worth it. He tried to make me believe that I couldn't do it. You know, he tried to make me believe that this was it. This was all my life was going to be. He did that. And he would try to... He will use people. He will use people in your life. He will use your kids. The devil will do anything he can to get to this right here. He will. But once you know and you realize and you understand that God is the key, you'll be a whole lot happier. Things will be a whole lot easier. It, when you're going through them tribulations and them trials, you won't even feel like you're going through them. Because just because of the love that God has for each and every one of us, he created all of us in his image and his likeness. In his, is that right? In his image and his likeness. I think that's how it goes. But he created us. He put us on this earth. He put us in a womb, made our mamas carry us for nine months. And birthed us. He did that. He allowed all of that to happen. He allowed our blood to flow. He allowed, baby, 
I'm going to tell y'all right now, I just told somebody this the other day. Carrying a baby for nine months is way harder than pushing a baby out. Let me tell y'all. Carry... <laughs> I think that's just how I feel. But carrying a baby for nine months was so tough for me. Just because your body changed, then you feel sick, then you feel this, then you feel that, then your emotions are all out of whack, you're ready to cry, you're ready to eat, you're ready to fight. Baby. And imagine going through that four times. Four. And mind you, I ain't going to say four times, I'm going to say five times because I had a miscarriage. Um, so mind you, I had all my kids natural. And I'm telling y'all, pushing that baby out for me was easier than carrying that baby for nine months. That's just like going through a trial or a tribulation for so long. For a certain period of time, you got to struggle. You got to press. You got to go through this thing and figure this thing out for nine months. Just imagine that you're going through this thing for nine months. You're struggling with this thing. Me, I'm going I'm to I'm speak on my own. Like I'm, I'm struggling with smoking weed for nine months, smoking that quarter weed for nine months. I'm struggling with fornicating. Nine months long, I'm struggling with these things. Like, Lord, this is really not who I want to be. This is really not what I want to do. I know you got more for me, but my mind and my body was not there. But once the nine months was over and it was time for labor, the devil got a, he got a period of time where he can try to trick you, try to pull you in, try to swindle you, try to manipulate you, manipulate you, <laughs> try to manipulate you, all of that. He only got a short period of time and then God going to take over. And my time was, my period was over. When I started crying out to God and I had got sick and tired of being sick and tired, I got tired of being high. I got tired of my kids walking past the room. You know, I would try to let them be in the back and smoke in the front of the house or I'd be in here and I'd make them stay, you know, back there or I'd go in my room and close my door or something like that. But then, you know, kids going to be kids. They going to want something. They going to ask for something. I got tired of my kids seeing me like that. I got tired of my kids seeing me stressed out. I got tired of my kids seeing me cry. I got tired of lashing out at them because I didn't understand what was going on. You know what I'm saying? We we do these things because we not we don't know. We confused. We not understanding why all our emotions and everything is just out of whack. We don't. But baby, when I tell you glory to God, glory to God, when I say and when I sit here on this truth talk and tell you that God is the key to everything, my extraordinary challenge, the solution to my extraordinary challenge was God. The solution to your extraordinary challenge, I believe, is God. And I believe in each and every one of y'all. I do. I don't know half of y'all. I probably don't know majority of y'all. <laughs> I probably do know majority of y'all. But I also know that God is the key. Jesus is the key. Praying. Even if you don't go to church, start praying and pray with a whole, give him your whole heart. Like pray with, be genuine when you pray. Be sincere when you pray. Like just believe in God. Like you can't just be like, like people be praying bad stuff happening and all that. Like them prayers, they hit the ceiling and come back down. Be genuine with God. Be real with God. Open up to God. He wants you to depend on him. He wants you to call on him. He's waiting for you to come to him. He's waiting for you to humble yourself. He's waiting on you to get on your knees, even if it means get on your face. Maybe at one point for me to forgive somebody, I had to lay flat out, cry, scream, whatever it is that you have to do, call on him. Call on him. He's waiting for us. He's waiting for all of us. I don't care what your status is. I don't care if you $50 million famous or you two cent poor. God is waiting on us to call on him. God is waiting on us to depend on him. He wants you. Okay? He wants you. He wants me. He wants our kids. He wants all of us. He wants us. And at this time, during this pandemic, during all of this corona mess and all of this, God is the only key. God is the only key. So to that <laughs> extraordinary <laughs> challenge, this is my extraordinary story. I'm still going through to this day. I'm still living from pickle cell to her do a day. Whatever it is that I got to do, testimony, just today, just today, I'm laying in my bed and I realized 
baby boy needs some pampers. Tidy needs some pampers. So I'm like, oh, Lord, I just did her yesterday. I got these pickle orders I'm trying to fill. So the money that I had, I wanted to be able to put into the pickle business so that I can keep making money. You know what I'm saying? We actually had just got some food from the pantry from Brother Mike. And you know what I'm saying? Like, we literally living off noodles and whatever we can get. So, you know what I'm saying? What, like, if I make money and I order some McDonald's or if I do ahead of her and I go to the store and buy a couple packs of meat, whatever it is, but that's where we at right now. I'm not going to lie. I get food stamps, but I, I'm i generous with my food stamps. Like, if I know you don't get food stamps or if I, you know what I'm saying, you come to me and tell me you need or if God lead me to give, I'm going to give because one thing I always know is that God is going to take care of me. God is going to provide for me. What? I want yeah. Bye. Bye, yo. <laughs> but yeah, I know. You know what I'm saying? God gonna take care of us. So when I do get my stamps, if you know what I'm saying, somebody asks or if God lead me to give a few, I will. You know what I'm saying? One thing I'm learning, and that's being obedient. When you be obedient to God, He will go above and beyond anything you can think or even ask. When you do what God tell you to do. Baby, got to come back. That You know how they say, oh, if you love a woman the right way, she'll come back with you and love so strong. Baby, if you love God the right way and you be obedient to God the right way and you live by his word and you do everything he tell you to do, he going to come back with something so strong, baby. It'll blow your wig back. <laughs> it'll knock these braids off my head. But, yes, God will love you. He loves you already. You just have to realize it. And you have to accept the love. You have to receive his love. If you don't ever receive his love, you're not never going to understand it. You're going to keep going through them trials and tribulations over and over and over again. So my fornication or my, you know what I'm saying, weed habit I had is gone. I thank God for delivering me. That was That's part of my extraordinary, extraordinary story. Because I was, baby, it was bad. It was bad. And I literally just passed a test where I was tempted to fornicate. And all I kept saying in my head was, believe God only. Trust God only. You know you don't have to do that. Your flesh wants you to. You know, and then, you know how you, your body parts start talking to you. I thank God I was able to ignore them. I thank God that I started to quote his word. Uh, what is it? See, this this is the devil. He just made me forget. Uh, oh my God, really? That ain't nothing but the devil. I just forgot that scripture. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. Bam, got it. That's what you get, devil. But yes, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. I started to quote that laying in my bed. It's twelve o'clock. Twelve o'clock. You know that's booty call hours. You know that's booty call hours. And I just started laying there, and I was just like, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. Believe God only. Trust God only. God got you. You don't have to do that. You don't have to do it. Even though, you know what I'm saying, I wasn't asked, but you know how certain conversations go when, you know, people say certain things, try to hit, hit. I thank God that I didn't do it. I thank God that I didn't go that way. And it just gave me joy. It gave me victory in my spirit because you start to do things and get on this regular cycle with things it just seemed like it's normal oh it's normal to have sex it's normal what's up baby yeah. say hi to the people because you really just with your crusty lip hi hi bye is your tablet dead yeah. it is yeah. okay well uh go in there i'll get you the charger but i need you to go in there right now is tidy still watching tv no okay go ahead baby but yeah you know, whatever it is that you're going through, he kind of made me forget where I was at, but I just want to let y'all know and let everybody know in doing this challenge, it was just my way to be able to witness to y'all. It was God's way of getting me because I used to shut myself out and put myself into such a bubble and get quiet and get mute. But this right here was this challenge that Nick Cannon had. It just was a way for God to get me to witness to y'all and to give y'all a little bit of what I went through and how to overcome it. So to end this video, to end this 
extraordinary video. <laughs> I have a scripture that God gave me this morning. Um, after I pray, I would like, I, you know, pray and I ask God to give me a scripture. Give me where to read. And he gave me Acts 14. He didn't give me no specific scripture until after I read it. So I had to, I read the whole chapter and then he gave me a specific scripture that kind of um, stuck out to me. So I'm going to read the King James Version. Then I'm going to also read the NIV Version. Now the NIV Version, it kind of brings it down to earth because, you know, the King James Version be like, what? I do not understand this. <laughs> but you also have to be prayed up. You know, you have to be. You know, in order to understand the King James Version, even a little bit, you, you have to seek God. You have to really get into God. You have to pray. You have to read. You have to seek God. Like, you have to want God to work in you and move in you. Like, God, make, he making all this move. <laughs> he made, he, He's doing all that. He is sending signals. God is sending signals to my brain and allowing my brain to send signals to the rest of my body. Okay? <laughs> but yeah, so I asked him this morning, like every time I get on my knees and pray, I ask God to give me a scripture to read. You know what I'm saying? Give me a passage. Give me give me something to study and to meditate on throughout the day. So today's scripture is Acts 14 and 22. Now this is the King James Version. Um, conforming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in the faith and that we must through much tribulation enter into the kingdom of God. Now I know y'all sitting there like, huh? What that mean? But here go the NIV version. Strengthening the disciples and encouraging them to remain true to the faith, we must go through many hardships to enter the kingdom of God. They said, at the end it said they said, but the, during, in the chapter it was, um, I want to say Peter, if I'm not mistaken, and a few others, God's disciple, out preaching to the people in a, a city. I can't pronounce half of the cities in the Bible. Yeah, I can't pronounce them, but they were in the city preaching and everything, and they had ended up leaving after, um, I want to say Peter got stoned. One of the disciples got stoned, and they thought he was dead, but he wasn't dead. I just read that. I thought he was dead, too. But I don't, he wasn't dead. So when they left and uh, all the disciples were around him, and uh, they ended up going back to check on the people, basically to, you know, make sure the people was living in the faith and trusting God. And even through, and just basically this passage let me know that even through my struggle, even through my day-to-day, -day, you know, check the check, pickle sale, or check the check hurt do. Through them tribulations, if I keep the faith and do everything that God's telling me to do, he's going to take care of me. And in the end, I will enter the kingdom of heaven. As long as I keep doing what God's telling me to do, as long as I keep praying, as long as I keep fasting, as long as I keep surrounding myself with like-minded people, as long as I keep witnessing and to bring souls in, as long as I keep doing all these things, trusting God, having faith in God, believing in God, giving people the benefit of the doubt, loving people. At right where they are, like, I'm going to love you if you a thief. I'm going to love that thief. I'm just going to make sure I know what to have around that thief and make sure my purse stay locked <laughs> around that thief. You know what I'm saying? I'm not speaking, you know what I'm saying, specifically. I'm just saying, you know what I'm saying? If you know somebody or you around somebody that you feel like you don't trust, you still, you love people where they are. You know what I'm saying? I'm not going to down you or belittle you because you're not in your word like me. I'm not finna down you or dog you because you don't look like me. Uh, I don't have the best of things. Baby, this Nike hoodie, this hoodie, I know I had this hoodie on in one of my other videos. But I am in, I'm in love with this hoodie because it belonged to my auntie. And she actually uh, unfortunately committed suicide back in May of last year. And we actually buried her on my birthday. So this year on my birthday, I really want to actually do something special. Her favorite color was yellow. So I want to do like a red carpet thing, birthday thing. So uh, my dress might be yellow. We'll see. 
but this was hers and i actually was able to get a lot of shoes a lot of her clothes because we were you know some something like the same size and our shoe we were the same shoe size so all of her heels baby yes i dress this i like to dress i like to put on heels i like to look fly the fledoras yes i wear them all of that i'm i'm into that so when i got some of her stuff it was like oh my god like you know Lord rest her soul. I hate she had to do that and go through that, but it actually, in her doing that, helps me. I've been suicidal. I've wanted to kill myself. I have cut myself. I've jumped in front of cars. Didn't care about my life. You know, but I thank God. But God, God, Jesus Christ is the only reason I am where I am today and I'm not dead. Because I allow myself to open up to him. I allow myself to let him in to my life. I allowed him to lead me and guide me in every area of my life. So please, y'all, please. You don't have to kill yourself. You don't have to drink yourself to death. You don't have to smoke a pound or a quarter of weed a day. Just pray. Allow God in. Allow him to help you. Allow him to guide and lead you. Hashtag extraordinary challenge peace love and victory